Whether you're making your stereo images with a point and shoot like a W3 from Fuji or doing twin rigs with uh, larger cameras or even doing cha-chas with the phone that's already in your pocket, uh, chances are you could be have, finding yourself in a creative rut. So today we're going to look at the work of Dominique Ochkowski, uh, architect, uh, designer. Um, his stereo pinhole camera, I think it's going to shake things up, get you seeing the world in a different way. And Dominique sent me a prototype to have a look at and uh, test in real world conditions. But today, I want to share it with you guys. This is the Minuta stereo pinhole camera. And stick around. Today, we're going to poke some buttons and see what's inside this thing. So let's go. Hi, my name is Diego Reese, active stereo photographer and developer of stereoscopic gadgetry. So it's easy to see how Dominique's uh, project caught my attention. It's 2D, it's 3D, it's 35 millimeter film, it's medium format film, uh, hyper stereo, close up stereo, panorama. But really what it is, is it's a it's a way to get your foot back in the door um, of the analog world. Uh, and that allows you to slow down and shoot more intentionally and understand exactly what it is that you're capturing. Because that capture, um, you have some time investment in that. And so you're really gonna think about it harder than you do when you're doing a typical uh, click. You can shoot a, a W3 all day long and not think about it, uh, you're gonna slow down with this. So let's see how he's packing all of those features into this unit. Uh, it'll be interesting. So the Minuta stereo pinhole camera comes with pinholes that are 65 millimeter uh, spaced apart, which is what typical uh, eye spacing for an adult. Uh, so that's, that's uh, what you would expect, but Let's look inside. Let's open these up here. It comes with these little uh, nice drawstring bags with a whole bunch of goodies in there. So what we're, we're looking at is the viewfinder and wow, all these pieces are what's gonna go in into the uh, where the film goes and they allow you to put different size film into the camera. So let's take a look inside, get a better idea. It smells good. It's, uh, it's MDF. It's got some weight to it. It's more uh, substantial than I, than I expected. Um, the craftsmanship is is incredible uh, very fine detail and the the fit of all the parts is you could hear the air as you're closing it up you can hear the air trying to find a way to escape so it resists closing it so it, it's pretty precise uh, this is the every there a lot of components on here are magnetic um, to keep them in place so with this guy, you would find the proper uh, film. Uh, it's kind of a, a riser that would go in and you find the right disc. In this case, I think I just inserted the wrong size. There we go. So, uh, it loads up. Uh, for those of you with a few gray hairs, you remember uh, loading up 35 millimeter film. And in this case, it's no different than any other camera that you had, only in that uh, you cut the, ta the tail off uh, when you wind it in. But inside here, you'll see that there are different masks. And these masks are, whoop, are what account for 
the different setups with film. So a large format 120 film uh, that also works when you put that in with 35 millimeter film. Uh, you can adjust the position of where it runs across on the uh, on the plane. This guy is the patch that goes on the front. Front has the shutter here, and it's actually got. There's my lock, and the shutter opens, and the holes are incredibly small. They are uh, an F uh, equivalent of an F40. Uh, aperture, uh, I'm sorry, 140. So that's that's literally pinhole. These are drilled and uh, checked with a microscope. Uh, so you would uh, you feel that little click as it as it shuts. So you'd find your exposure time and open it and close them up. But what if you want to shoot things that are super close to the lens? You can't use a 65 millimeter spacing because that is, uh, you're going to end up with too big a, of a difference between those perspectives. So what this allows you to do is cover up one of the, uh, one of the, the lenses and you make your first exposure. And I recommend having something like the Jasper slider where it's incremented. So when you slide, you have uh, the ability to slide your camera and uh, calculate how far to slide and, and put a st hard stop. Uh, you would have to uh, make your first exposure and slide over and have that uh, movement, the overall movement between the two, uh, predetermine that. Um, and there are apps that will help you to, to determine your, your uh, lateral shift of the camera, but when you get your first shot, move that over, get your second shot. Uh, that also works for doing um, hyper stereo. You can get your first shot, travel way down the line and get your second shot. If you have a blue sky day and your subjects are really far away, uh, mountain ranges, things like that where you're not going to see um, fine movement of the tree branches or clouds, um, so long as nothing moves in your scene, uh, you're going to get uh, like a miniaturized effect. It makes that whole mountain range look like it's small and you can hold it and evaluate it in your hand. Uh, so it comes with several viewfinders and with these they are, one thing, they lock the, they lock the back, the lid in place. So not only is there a strong magnet holding it, uh, this keeps it, uh, has a, a physical um, block that keeps it from opening up. And he has uh, these three uh, spikes here are actually a, wow, it's a clever, clever contraption. So when you look through the viewfinder and you pay attention on your peripheral and you catch these guys just at the bottom, they'll line up in the circles and that's going to end up being uh, your what's in frame. I better shut that. The back has a, an indicator so when you put your film in, you, uh, you know what you're shooting with. Uh, it also has the setup for uh, letting, you know, letting you know how many clicks to rewind your film. With the 120 uh, loaded in there, you're able to see your, uh, you can see your exposure. That window opens up showing you the exposure on the back. And a built-in uh, bubble level. So yeah, it's got the quarter, uh, quarter 20 mount, top and bottom. Uh, this is a prototype, so it, there are a, a few changes that he's uh, refining the design already, but uh, that's where he's at right now. When you're shooting sequential shots or those one lens at a time shots for doing macro, getting right up on something, or doing hyper stereos where you're shooting 3D of, of mountain ranges, uh, that is, uh, that's a pretty advanced feature and you're looking for no movement uh, 
between uh, the or during the entire exposure. Uh, so most of the time, uh, right out of the box, you're going to be able to go shoot just typical uh, 3D. Well, I shouldn't say typical, uh, uh, standard uh, 3D, which is 3D that um, uh, in a room or a larger room, if you're going out in the yard, out to a car show or something like that, uh, things are going to be maybe uh, 10, 15 foot away from your lens. So that's going to be the, the normal movement uh, or the normal distance. But uh, with a pinhole camera, those holes are so small for the aperture, the light is, is really limited. Now, there's, there's, there's light, it's true pinhole. There's no glass and no optics involved. And that light is barely getting in there, which means the shutter times are going to be a lot longer. Cool if you're going to uh, shoot waterfalls, you get that uh, really ribbony water. If you get uh, people in there, uh, in the right situations with the right shutter time, you're going to end up with ghostly figures with other parts of the scene sharper in focus. Uh, that takes some, some experimenting, but that, that goes back to uh, talking about what is uh, about evaluating the scene beforehand and, and really shooting intentionally, uh, doing your math first. But being on a longer uh, shutter time like that, uh, we're talking um, anywhere from seconds to, to minutes that you're having the shutter open. Uh, you're going to want to have a, a decent tripod. Uh, you can set them on something, but being that it's stereo, uh, you don't have the luxury of putting this thing right on the ground and getting the foreground uh, in the shot. You're going to want uh, to have the near this thing in the, in the frame uh, quite a ways out, uh, 6 to 10 feet or so. Uh, so that means that you're going to have to prop it on the edge of something. But tripod, uh, just lug it around. You, you do what you got to do because uh, it's totally worth it to, to get some dreamy shots. If you're wondering how you can get your hands on one of these uh, or you just want to get more information, you got to check out the Kickstarter page. Uh, go search for Stereo Minuta on Kickstarter and you're going to find some really cool videos, very well done. Uh, the whole rundown on exactly what's going on here. Uh, if you'd like to see more of my own work and, and adventures, uh, you can follow Carrie, my wife, and myself as we travel all over the United States doing uh, stereo photography. And uh, my wife is a painter, so we're all over the place. Uh, you can stop by stereoscopejourney.com and see what's happening there. But Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm glad you could hang out for a little bit and uh, get the rundown of what's going on with the pinhole 3D world. Here we go. I'll see you out on the road somewhere. Draw me a line. Let me know what you think. Thanks, guys. Good night.